Sange Shingdu Mikte Uwargi Jokun Namjak Shingla Chupasho Iram Guru Ratna Mandala Kam Niryatayami Sange Chudang Soki Choknam La Jangchu Bardu Dakni Kabsu Chi Saki Chenyan Gipe Sunam Ki Jola Penchir Sange Drupar Sho Sange Chudang Soki Choknam La Jangchu Bardu Dakni Kabsu Chi Saki Chenyan Gipe Sunam Ki Jola Penshir Sange Drupa Sho Sange Chudang Soki Choknam La Jangchu Bardu Dakni Kabsu Chi Daki Chenyan Gipe Sunam Ki Jola Penshir Sange Drupa Sho Very good. Okay, we'll start the quiz right away. So if you're not taking it, take a nap. Here we go. Just three questions. Enjoy.
לא... הייתה... אוקיי... Okay, Lo Jong. This is the home stretch. <laughs> That's why there's five people in class. <laughs> That's how it goes. Um, what does Holy Gish and Michael like to say? He's like, Jack ass determination. <laughs> right, Alex? Yeah, it just means uh, you can't stop for anything. You know about, I don't know, 75% of the time I don't want to teach this class. <laughs> For instance, usually when I start doing it, it's better because um, I see Kelly laughing at my jokes. I'm like, okay, this is worth it. Um, but uh, most of the time, I'm like, Ugh, not this class. This is actually why I did, made this class because I knew there was no way I'd finish my homework in time unless I made myself accountable to other people. <laughs> so you have to use skillful means, especially with yourself. I know myself. I hate writing assignments. I hate homework, but I love teaching. So, um, so I came up with this. Um, so anyway, um, he's got to keep going. You can't stop for anything. No one. Nothing. I'm talking about imprisonment, marriage, you know, those are about the same anyway, right? Uh, <laughs> I'm joking, I've never been married. Kids, you just have to keep going. And there's always a way if you want to do it. If you don't want to do it, there's always an excuse, right? Riva says kids, married, business, all kinds of problems. <laughs> I mean, those can be good things too, I guess. I don't know. That's everything I avoid in life. So I don't know. Um, just gotta keep going. If Rivas can do it, anyone can. <laughs> I met him seven years ago. You should have seen him then. <laughs> Nah, Reeves has always been awesome. So I'm proud of him. All right, here we go. So now we're on ACI review course three, course 18, class seven on Lojong. Um, what does Lojong, Kelly McGee, what does Lojong mean and what does it not mean? Or what's it not, what is a bad way to translate it? And what's a good way to translate it? How about that? Yeah. Um, sometimes it's translated as mind training, mm -hmm. which is not the ideal way of thinking about it. Yeah. Why, why would they translate it as mind training though? Because low, like if you directly translate the individual words, low 
can be interpret translated into mind and strongest training <laughs> but um yeah. also like mind and heart uh get interchanged in tibetan thinking as compared to western thinking perfect 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 keep going so um the preferred translation is heart training or even better developing a good heart um and it's the practices, the advi advices for practicing and developing a good heart. Yes. Bonus, mm -hmm. what another form of this word jong comes in a famous Tibetan word. What is that form and what is the word? So jong? So jong too, good, that's true. <laughs> Something maybe slightly more relevant to this, though. Mm. I don't know. Zhang the same as Zhang, like Zhang Chu. Like Zhang Chu. I was going to say that, but I thought it was a different word. No, it's the same. It's a, it's okay. a form of the same word. OK. It means to practice or develop or, or purify, too. That's. It could be, I believe Zhang is purified. Hold on, let me double check. For some reason, I've looked it up so many times, but I'm gonna look it up again. Let me show you my process here. This is the Tibetan word I could not find today. Okay, this nope, I couldn't find it. I don't know. I didn't look that hard though. So that's probably why I didn't find it. Okay, Zhang. Purify, yay. And then chub means like, like do it like completely or something. Let me see. Total, yeah. <laughs> or you could say consummate purse. <laughs> I, don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever seen that second word before. I've seen it like once. <laughs> um, Perspicacity. No, pers perspicacity. 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 Yeah. I've heard it. Okay. Hey, Google. The quality of having ready insight into things, shrewdness. Mm. Okay, this, this word might be completely correct, but this is the kind of translation Geshe Michael hates. Because it it might be correct, and maybe like four scholars are like, consummate perspicacity, I hate when that happens on Wednesdays, you know? They're like, you know, like, Kalmany. Don't, Kelly McGee, don't do Kalmany later, okay? Oh yeah, Kalmany. Yeah, it's divisive speech, but Right? Like a translation that's not a translation because nobody knows the word. Yeah, it's a translation, but the word is so rare. You got to translate into English that's regularly uh, understood. Here's Kalmany. Or is Kalmany the is harsh speech? I forget. Maybe it's harsh speech. <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> you get it. Okay, so yeah, perfect. Let me give you, thank you. Lo Jung, same as Jung Chu. Um, okay, here's to this question. The Tibetan word Lo Jung has been translated in English as mental training, state of reference by an eminent Lama to the famous Lo Jung in eight verses, eight verses, which gives insight into another way of translating this word. Okay, so the first Lo Jung we studied in this course was the Lojong tik gema. Tik means verses. Gema. Gema. Gema? Gema. Lojong tik gema. I always hear gema, but shouldn't it be gema? I don't know. Anyway, ge means eight. And ma just is like 
a particle that refers to something that pertains to wisdom, right? It's the female particle in Tibetan Ma. Anywho, um, that Lama was the first Chankya Rinpoche of which the Chankya line became quite famous. Um, usually the, the line becomes famous because the first Lama in that line is so powerful. Like, um, like many Lamas who, eh, just political issues with mentioning their names right here. Nawang Lopsang Chunden is his name. Mm, the, the powerful master of the secret word whose mind is totally pure and possesses the Dharma. It's a pretty, it's a pretty badass name. Um, and, and this is said to be a uh, reincarnate, um, a past life of Pabanka Rinpoche, who is my Lama's, 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 Lama. Right, Rivas? Okay. And he served to the Lama of the Emperor of China, which is a big deal. 1642, 1714, what is that? That is the beginning of the Qin Dynasty, if I remember if I'm correct, yeah. I think Qin started in 1644. So right there, okay, if I'm right which I'm pretty sure I am. He refers to Lo Zhong in, in eight verses as advices on developing Zhong, the mind, Sem or Lo, of enlightenment or the good heart. So literally Zhang Sem, right? Zhong is Zhang. Wait, hold on, maybe. Let me just, I like double checking stuff. Sometimes I remember, have stuff in my head, then I don't even I'm like, is that true? But okay, here we go. So Jung. Jung Tar Jung Dar <laughs> probably Jung Wa. Yep, and look what we have here. Jangity jang jang jang. Hmm. What isn't jang chup spell just? Hold on, this is what I do with my whole day. Hope you don't mind. Jang chup. Hmm, it seems like they're related, but it's not the same exact word. I see. Okay. So jang means to purify, like lo jang or so jang, right? I guess. Oh my God, I found this thing that shows you how, wait, did I show you guys how Tibetan and Chinese words are related? Proto-Sino-Tibetan, <laughs> That's exciting for me. Not for you, you have lives, you have loved ones. Okay. <laughs> that was a joke, I have loved ones. So I guess it's related, but not the same exact, if you care. Uh, Lop needs to learn, right? <laughs> there you go, wrestling. I don't know that word. Well, it can also mean cultivate or cleanse. Okay, this is more the one we're using, right? Pongwa to stop problems, or Dakpar Jepa to purify, <laughs> teach the sea. This is not a good translation of that one. It's kind of sin karma. Yeah, that's not a good translation. Okay, but we get it. Oh, it also means to make diarrhea to facilitate bowel movements. <laughs> That's good to know. Don't want to misuse that in a sentence. Okay. It's good to know the stuff about language. Okay, good. I checked. So it's related, but not the same exact, exact. 
Um, two, in what sense are other living beings more precious than a gem that could give you anything you wish for? Mm, mm. What sense, Leah? Wait, I had a peek of the answer. Can I still say it? Yeah, just say whatever. It's all good. Um, that, um, what was the question again? Other living beings uh, more precious than, is it because um, we can't, um, we can't even imagine what it's like to become enlightened. We don't even know what kind of questions to ask. Like we don't even know what to wish for. We don't even know how good it can be. Yeah, we really like that that story of a guy who gets like the genie lamp and just like, I want a car. You know, you're like, dude, wish for more wishes, man. Come on. Like, wish for omniscience or something good. Like, all the other stuff's just gonna run out. We're like that. We're like a little kid with a with Aladdin's lamp. Right, like wishing for a car or wishing for a million dollars. Yeah, a million dollars that you spend. I want a hot girlfriend. Hot girlfriend breaks up with you. I want a car. A car breaks down. <laughs> All our wishes are samsadic. <laughs> yeah, I remember like, you know, like wishing for like the next bigger job for a while. I mean, I haven't had that wish for a while, but for a while it was always like the next bigger thing. Yeah, um, I had a friend who was into the Dharma and he said he knew someone who was always, he was always trying to get the next bigger boat. Like that was his <laughs> thing, which seems absurd to me. Like, you know, I never cared about like a boat in my life, you know what I mean? Um, but there's people out there that like, don't care about the next language to learn or whatever I care about, you know? which is like three things, by the way, you can probably guess. Um, yeah, they're just like, eh. Wait, are you I, making a joke? Are you calling yourself Basuko? Basu, Basuku. Are you calling yourself Basuku? I'm more like Mr. One Thought, okay? <laughs> Everything else is a, a divergence of one particular thought. Um, I won't mention that thought on this class, but you can probably figure it out. Number three, why does the third verse stress stopping mental afflictions at the very moment they begin? Ah. Okay, Kelly McGee, sorry, you're the only, everyone else is on the Spanish channel, so it's you or Leah, <laughs> that's it. Um. Because any moment that we uh, allow our mental afflictions to continue plants the seed for them to expand and grow and come back much bigger. Yeah. I wanna stop them right away. Yeah. Totally. That's it. And if you're anything like me, you're going to be gloriously unsuccessful at this, okay? I mean, once in a while, I have a moment. I'm not saying the Dharma has not changed my mind. Um, I think Lama John Brady had a joke. Uh, well, how's it go? Um, you know, I because Lama John's been meditating for like 50 years or something, like actually, <laughs> like, like I'm serious. Like he has, right, Alex? It's something like that. Like, like and he's so good at it. Like <laughs> he doesn't even like twitch. You ever talk to him? He doesn't, he, he doesn't even like, he doesn't like move like in any kind of, he just like, He's at least an arhat or something. I don't know. But anyway, I can't really say, but he's very suspicious. I'll say that. Anyway, um, there's kind of a joke, just like someone like that who has all these good qualities would be like, yeah, 
I'm scattered. I was just all this stuff going on with me. Um, but someone's like, but you've been meditating for like half a century. He's like, yeah, imagine what I'd be like if I hadn't been the last 50 years. I'm like that. Like, I have all these issues, you know? I'm like moody. I get annoyed at my my mom. Um, I In general, I hate people. <laughs> like, but I'd probably be like psychopath or something. It's <laughs> not for my practice. So I don't know. Thankfully, I found the Dharma and stuff. Okay. So yeah, you got to stop them right away because the fact that even a few instances of negative mental karma are enough to produce the perception of entire lower realm life, we must avoid even these. What motivation is this, by the way? Oh, you mean avoiding a lower rebirth? Yeah, what motivate? Who, who has that motivation? Um, that's one of the lower schools. Yeah, which one? Uh, is it the Abhidharmas, the first ones, or is it after that? This was, we went over in course 15. My favorite one. Did you say 15? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we went over course 15. It was, it was an auxiliary question. It was a question talking about the scopes as opposed to the- Yeah. The yanas, the vehicles, the, the ways. This is, this is people of the lesser scope. It's not even Hinayana. People of the lesser scope don't want to be born in a lower realm. Because it's not even about Nirvana. It's just avoiding a lower realm. Yep, exactly. So people of the medium scope want to avoid, get off the wheel altogether. And so okay. that, that is Hinayana. That's Hinayana motivation, wanting to reach Nirvana. So both listeners and self-made Buddhas are medium school practitioners. What schools, what are the names of the schools that are lower scope? Hinayana, literally. Oh. Um, but Abhidharma um, and, and Sutrist. Abhidharma and Sautrantika's um, neither of those schools are trying to get fully enlightened. Mind only, lower middle way and higher middle way are trying to get enlightened. Although a lot of this stuff is artificial and it's just historical and it's just philosophical. Like just because someone's in Thailand of a certain thing doesn't mean they don't want to get enlightened or whatever. And it's, it's more of what's actually going on in someone's mind nowadays as opposed to what tradition they study or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there's literally people who are like, I just want to save myself. And you're like, okay, they're Hinayana, regardless of what color robes they're wearing, what country they're from, what language they speak, what ha kind of hat they wear, and vice versa. You, someone could be like, yeah, I, I want to save all beings and never heard of Buddhism in life, but they're Mahayana if yeah. they have bodhicitta in their heart. Doesn't matter. It is all principles. Okay, if we continue to take the loss in any situation upon ourselves and continue to give the advantage in any situation to others, what's to stop others from taking advantage of us? By the way, this is the whole course. <laughs> if you don't have this logic clear in your mind, you're not gonna do lojo. Lojong, as far as practice, it's, it's the epitome of Mahayana practice. All your logic, all your emptiness, all your meditation, all your perfections, all your wisdom have to go into doing two seconds of real Lojong. 
completely necessary, or you will fail miserably, <laughs> or you will do something and then resent it very badly. How do I know? I failed. I resented. I still resent. I was thinking about someone I resent today. <laughs> I try not to resent them, but I do. Okay. Um, but that's, that's okay. I try. But, uh, but it takes real, you have to really understand emptiness and really care and try really hard. And at some point, just go for it. Because you don't know you're going to resent it until you at least try. And then you know. <laughs> and what the Master Shani Davis say we should do when we practice Lojong? From the beginning, the guide has sent us to give vegetables and the like. <laughs> give potatoes. Some broccolis. Of... Yeah, broccolis. <laughs> Rivas, perfect. Yeah, you gotta give broccolis. All right. Then you can give kidneys. <laughs> Probably only one though, okay? <laughs> I don't know. Unless you got some crazy karma. All right, let's see what Holy Geshe Michael says. First of all, our career is to be a bodhisattva. We are pledged to serve others as their servants and to assure that all their wishes are fulfilled, even at our own expense. Secondly, any real suffering or want that we incur, we have given away, wait, any real suffering or, or want that we incur because we have given away what we have to others can only in karmic terms have been created by previous incidences in which we failed to give others what we had. This does not, however, mean that we shouldn't keep others from harming ourselves or anyone else because this will hurt them in the future. So there's a, what's the logical question that comes out of this? Shouldn't we, shouldn't we take stuff, shouldn't we allow others to give to us constantly so that they can concur? <laughs> Come on, you guys don't think diabolically? Come on. And yes and no, you have to be really careful with that kind of thinking. Just be careful with your motivation. Should you allow others to help you? Yes, you should. Should you take advantage of others while tricking yourself into believing you're doing good karma for them. No, you shouldn't. Are you maybe in denial about the second? Yes. Who should you ask? Your girlfriend, <laughs> your wife, your boyfriend, your husband, your best friend. They'll, if they're honest, they'll be like, yeah, well, do you really care or, <laughs> all right? It's hard, but you have to do for it. I guess I used to always say, yeah, this stuff's difficult, but there's no other option. <laughs> so you have to do it anyway. I mean, think about it. I mean, I don't know if you guys know who Buckminster Fuller is, but he's one of the first, for most famous American inventors in history. When was he born? Bucky was born 1895, I think. I was going to say about 1900. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, he was Harvard class of, I think, 1916. So it's about 1895. He's like 1895 to 1981 or something. But anyway, you can check. But he... um. He used to always talk about, because imagine living from 1895 to 1980. Like what happened with technology? <laughs> I mean, 1895, that's like 
they just finished like the transcontinental railroad <laughs> like the bike was just invented <laughs> like imagine being born like just after the bike was invented so like manned missions to the moon that's that's a leap um it's considered like the biggest leap cuz they cuz like technology is kind of flattened out you know People talk about this, but that's a whole other subject. Anyway, long story short, you always just talk about the moon and people getting to the moon. Imagine how many challenges there is to getting people on the moon. Can nine, 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 chains, nine Chains to the Moon. That was a book he wrote, Nine Chains to the Moon. Yeah, you know, you know Bucky? Yeah, he wrote Nine Chains to the Moon. Mm -hmm. What did he invent? He did the geodesic dome. Oh. He invented the Dymaxion house. He invented the Dymaxion car, which apparently was a death trap, but he did. Um, he invented the Buckminster Fuller projection, map projection. He invented fullerene balls, which they still use to um, clean up like oil spills. A uh, bunch of stuff. Uh, he made books. He made he, he made a book that was shaped like like a geodesic dome. Like it was it came as in a triangle, and then you could unwrap it and make the book into uh, not not a dome but a sphere. Yeah, omni omni triangulation was his thing. Mm -hmm. You got to read. Um, synergetics that book that's some brr. okay anyway so it's really hard to get people to the moon okay that's that's what we have to practice like there's going to be some obstacles trust me but how else are you going to get there all right what does the first chunk of Rinpoche have to say about how we should take the loss in, in, in any situation ourselves. I forget what he says, what does he say? Oh yeah, of course, <laughs> exactly the opposite of what I do. <laughs> this is why Master Shanti Deva says to give vegetables. Ch the first Shankar Rinpoche said to do it without regret and with the highest joy. Admittedly, I've pulled off a couple things in my life, all right? And that's why I know it's possible. And they've led to enormous good. But not always. So, yeah, they say regret is, to regret a good thing is really bad karma. I think I've heard Gishy Michael say it's maybe worse karma than not doing a good thing in the first place. Which is very depressing, um, but you're gonna make mistakes, so just do the four powers. Okay, when um, Gelba Yang Gumpa says that your your own mind is the Buddha, what does he actually mean? What does he actually mean, Leah? She slash her. Mute, 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 unmute. He means that um, our own mind is 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 empty. So, and that in fact we can become that we can become a Buddha. What does our own mind have being empty have to do with becoming a Buddha? Um, well, anybody. I mean, a great scholar or um, somebody who you know doesn't have you know, as much experience or as much resources, like all have the same emptiness. And that's what we need in order to um, have the, cre create the essence body of, of the Buddha. We all have the same, we all have the same stuff. So you're saying we're already Buddhas? I'm not saying we're already Buddhas, but I'm saying that because we're empty, that we, um, it, it's be it is because we're empty that we in fact can become Buddhas. Wait, so you're saying Galwa Yang Gumpa 
is wrong. He just says your own mind is the Buddha right here. So aren't we already Buddhas? Um, well, we don't know um, who's a Buddha and, and who's not. Um, but um, I'm not, no, I'm not saying he's wrong, but I'm saying I would read it in a, in a different way. You just, you just said that we're not Buddhas. Um, I wouldn't know if you're a Buddha or if Kelly's a Buddha or anybody else on the call is, is a Buddha, but we all have the stuff that we can become Buddhas. Are we Buddhas or not? <laughs> um, we may in fact be Buddhas. I know you like le yes and no answers, right? I like answers, <laughs> actual answers. Yes and no answers is the form of debate we practice. Okay, good answer. Um, so <clears throat> as Leah pointed out, what this is saying is that the emptiness of our minds is equivalent to the emptiness of the Buddhist mind. And this is what is called Buddha nature. The fact that our minds are equivalent to the Buddha's mind in its emptiness, in its lack of a self-existent nature to itself. So that with the right karma applied could then make us perceive, perceive ourselves as a Buddha. And what others perceive our, us as would be dependent upon their karma. Okay, the mind in the sense of one's wisdom has the capacity to take one to Buddhahood the emptiness of our minds is our Buddha nature, our capacity to become enlightened. Because the mind does not exist from its own side, we can one day be forced by our good karma to see it as the omniscient mind of a Buddha. Yay, good job, Leah. Okay. <clears throat> Seven, what does he mean when he says nothing but the dharma means anything at all? Throw the rest out like trash. It all boils down to dying. <laughs> I love I love these like Kadampa geshes. They don't they're like they don't mess around. They're like, okay, we don't have time for that politically correct. <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's all garbage. Okay, how about this? Kelly McGee. Yes. Does this mean other religious tr traditions are trash? No. Does this mean that? All other religious traditions just boil down to dying. No. So every other religious tr tradition is going to lead you to the same exact place? I don't think he's talking about other religious traditions. I didn't ask you what he's <laughs> talking about. Um. What was the last question? <laughs> Does this mean that all other religious traditions, all religious traditions are gonna lead you to the same place? No. So other religious traditions are not gonna lead you to get enlightened. They, they could. So does that mean religious traditions are all gonna lead you to the same place or not? <laughs> um, you just said they aren't. I mean, I guess it depends on how you practice them. So how you practice is what you get out of things? Yeah. Oh, so if you practice well, if two people practice well, they'll get the same, same thing out of something. I mean, if you think of practicing well as planting virtuous karma. Oh, that's different. <laughs> talking about planting virtuous karma, we're talking about practicing well. I'm talking about practice planting virtuous karma. Oh, so if you plant virtuous karma, regardless of what religion you call yourself, it's all going to lead to the same place. Mm, I mean, it, everybody's perception of that place is probably different. If two people plant the same seed, will that seed ripen as a similar result for each person, regardless of what religion they call themselves? 
Ooh, good question. Yeah. Yeah, that's the first law of karma. Yeah. So therefore, what defines something as dharma? Is it the fact that it's Buddhist or? No. No. What defines something as dharma? Um, something that hmm is it something that helps you get get out of suffering yeah dharma literally means the truth yeah, I was going to say that, but I felt like it needed more than that. <laughs> you could have elucidated on that, but yeah, it doesn't matter what you call it, like Christianity or right. Islam or Buddhism or Hinduism or <clears throat> whatever the hundred traditions there are in the world, hundred million. So <clears throat> it only boils down to dying if it doesn't include the elements that don't stop you from dying. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> the reason I'm asking you these questions, although you tried to worm your way out of them, is <clears throat> because someone can really view this kind of question in a sectarian way. They're like, oh, those Buddhists, they're saying everything else is trash, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. You could practice Buddhism and have no results. And you could practice, um, I don't know, staring at crystals. I've stared at crystals. <laughs> it's amazing for me. Other people look at crystals and nothing happens. I've looked at crystals and like um, amazing things have happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's because of my seeds, not because of the crystals. That's the point. All right, let's see. <laughs> Keeping in mind the fact that we must die, thinking we, we, that we will die today enables us to keep our priorities straight and divide between what is important to do and what is not, between what is Dharma and what is not. <clears throat> yes, you have to keep your death in mind as much as the day as you can. Actually, I don't think about it much anymore, but then once in a while I reflect, I'm like, why am I always doing all this stuff? I'm like, oh yeah. All that death meditation I did. Okay, we're still online. Keep going, keep going. And people are always like, what are you doing now? Where are you going? What, like, what amazing thing you're up to next, word? I'm like, ah, doing this project. They're like, whoa. I'm like, to die any day, better get on it. Okay, hey, <clears throat> what does it really mean when Gelwa Yang Gunpa says, the reality of things is beyond the mind. So reside in the state where you hold to nothing, nothing, nothing. Does that mean, does that mean you should be lazy and not do anything, Leah? Mute, 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 mute. No, I mean, you were just talking about doing stuff, you know, doing stuff with, you know, with the motivation to, um, you know, stop, stop suffering um you didn't say i know what i think but what is gelo young gumpa saying um i think he's um talking about um not residing in a state of um deceptive reality, deceptive where, where, reality. Where, where where you think that things are um coming from their own side and it's really hard to not reside in that state because we have so many seeds that we've um, had to see things in that state for, you know, so for time immemorial. Nonetheless, um, it's really important that we um, you know, practice Dharma and meditation and bodhicitta. So we're less likely to, um, you know, see things as being self-existent. If you could describe this, if you could sum this up in four words, what four words would you choose? Let's see, it all boils down to dying. Oh, that was the last question. That's more than four words. Oh, it's five words. If you include the particle. <laughs> the direct perception, perception of, of emptiness. emptiness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. 
Uh, he means that a normal state of mind perceiving apparent reality cannot perceive at the same time ultimate reality, which is the direct perception of emptiness. And he urges us to stay in a state where we no longer hold anything to exist independent of our own projections forced upon us by our past karma, which is what Leah was saying, right, Leah? Yeah, just what um, Goa Yang Gumpa said, yes. <laughs> Yang, not Yang. <laughs> Yang. I taught you how to pronounce Tibetan. Goa Yang Gumpa. Yeah, Yang Lotum. Uh, I think that's that Yang. This Yang means like a ravine. Actually, I think it should be high tone. If it means ravine, it's high tone. Uh, Are you going to look in the dictionary? Are we, are we going to look in the dictionary? I guess. There might be a faster way, though. Uh, what's faster? Let me see. Oh, let's just think in ACI courses is going to be faster. And since I cleaned up my gopher, it's amazing now. Okay, here we go. So this isn't the eight verses, though. This is a different lojong. Yeah, because we're on a review course. We already finished the eight-verse review. Okay. Yep. Which one is this? This is Gelong Young Gumpas. I forget what it's called. Oh, okay. Um, we can look right now, though. Here we go. Not that one. This one. There it is. Gelong Young Gumpa. The advices of the Victoria one. Um, here we go. Oh, it is just, it's low tone young. Yeah, it's low tone young. Gunpa, that means like a monastery or something. Temple. Gawa means victorious. Like a gompa. Yeah, mispronounced gompa. Gom. Pa, gom means to, that's a different thing. Yeah. They call gunpas gunpas nowadays. That's a different thing. And gelwa sounds like kelwa. We we talked about that. We talked about um, fortunate ones. Kelwa, high tone, first column. Gelwa means victor, a Buddha, like Jina in Tibetan. I mean, in Sanskrit, conqueror. Let me see, victorious one. Kelwa means a uh, fortunate one, or Kelden, slightly different. Okay, I answered the question, my own question. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Who was the first person to openly teach the Lojong known as seven step practice for developing a good heart? Remember to give his full name and also his dates. Okay, who's that? Um, I don't remember his title, but Master Chekwa, Master's not right. Uh, Geshe, Geshe Chikawa. Chikawa. Leah, teach Kelly McGee the Tibetan alphabet. <laughs> Are you open for that, Kelly? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I didn't ask Kelly's permission. <laughs> my, language, my language seeds are not very good. I don't want to hear it. You're... <laughs> Ke Kelly, your name sounds like a Tibetan word. Kelly sounds like Kawa. There's a seed. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Kelly. Good karma. <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> I'm just joking. If you want to learn Tibetan, you should learn from Leah Kelly. Um, it would be good for both of you. Um, maybe I'll force Leah to teach a class of the three jewels. I'd That's be happy. Like... I'd be happy to to propose that. <laughs> I didn't say propose. Oh, oh, you mean to them? Yeah. Yes, yeah. to Rachel. Yeah, we'll see. I'm going to teach Sanskrit in the fall or the just, spring. I just sent her a proposal to teach something. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah, um, to teach about stupas. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, his name is Geshe Chikawa. When did he live? I 
have it. I'm cheating, but 1101 to 1175. Yeah. Who was his teacher? Um, Master Sharawa. Shar Sharawa. Who was Sharawa's teacher? Um, Master Potawa. Potawa. Why didn't he learn directly from Potawa? Why didn't Master Sharawa learn it directly from him? No, he did. Why didn't Geshe Chikawa learn from <clears throat> um, Geshe Potawa? I don't know. Yes, you do. I taught you the story. He, he came to Khalasa and Potawa had just died. Oh, that's that story. Yeah, and Geshe they were, they were arguing. They were all being too nice. They were all being nice to each other and nobody was taking his spot. They weren't being nice. They're doing Lojong. <laughs> <laughs> Lojong's better than nice, although it might look like nice. That's true. It also might look like mean, so be careful. <clears throat> um, okay, good. Yes. Kadampa Geshe Chikawa. Geshe Dorje is his um, full name. <clears throat> so he's the one who traveled that whole story of that he traveled to... I forget the location, specifically looking for these teachings. Yeah, Hlasa. Yeah. And how long before Shar would teach him? Oh, probably a while. I don't know. I think it was nine years. Wasn't he also, though, observing him? He, like, um, in terms of making sure he was an adequate and a good teacher? Mm, not... Not as part of the story, it probably was during the time, but you're maybe thinking of Lord Atisha, <clears throat> who traveled to mm, yeah. Indonesia and apparently waited 12 years to ask her teachings, which I'm like, what? I can't wait 12 minutes for anything. <laughs> I'm just like, eh, Netflix, <laughs> eh, YouTube. Um, okay, also, What's it? How is it? Chikawa. Um, I'm looking at the Tibetan spelling. Ka. Dampa. Geshe. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's all. <clears throat> the, the prefix letter is different. Um, oh, so it's not Chikawa, it's Chikawa. Ah, it's, wait, no, wrong again. This is the second column. It is Chikawa. Okay, good. And, Ch and Chikapa. Okay, blah, blah, blah. And it's the Lojong Dun Duma. What does this, what does this Dun mean, Leah? Lojong Dun Duma. It's the easy one. Excuse me. Is that, um, are those numbers? One of them, yes. So, is, so does Dun mean seven? Yay, good. You know, I'm just looking at the different spellings, Chikawa and Chikapa. Um, <laughs> It's not, it's not just the, um, the last syllable. It's also that there's, um, there's a different um, letter at the beginning. I just spent five minutes talking about that prefix letter. Where were you? Um, wow, I didn't hear you talking about the ma. I heard you talking about the ka, the ka, ka or ka. But I was talking about the prefix letter. Sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was writing the prefix letter, sorry. <laughs> That's fine, that counts. Yeah. Yeah, the difference between this Chikawa and this Chikawa is the prefix letter. And then the prefix letter is the same in this one for Chikapa. Anyway, these was and pas are interchangeable in general. It just means from that place usually. Huh. Yeah, or yeah, something like that. Okay, and this turn means like goal, or in this case, step, or like thing you reach or something. How many more of these? I'm getting tired already. Okay, I'm doing good. 
Oh, five powers. I love the five powers. Okay, here we go. Why was this practice not taught openly for many centuries? Why wasn't it taught openly? Okay, it's Kelly McGee's turn. Sorry, we only have two students today <laughs> on the English channel. <laughs> um, because people were concerned that, like if a student wasn't ready to hear it, um, they, they might have like an adverse reaction to it and not understand or not understand it. What do you want me to do? Practice. Give away all my stuff to yeah. who? Yeah, and that's like worse. <laughs> I once had this student and I like explain the pen thing to them. They're like, uh-huh, pen, yep. They're like, yep, dog, chew toy, pen, yep. They're like, get it, things are empty. Got it, got it, got it. And then she started talking about her sister and how she, um, how she didn't like her sister or something. I'm like, yeah, but your sister's empty too. And she's like, no, 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 no. That bitch ain't my fault. <laughs> something like that. She was just like, all the emptiness teachings were like, <laughs> like one fell <fifth> swoop. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. I'm like, oh my God, that's great. It just like, bing. Um, it was a great example <laughs> of not teaching people teachings too early, um, which mistake I've made like a hundred times, but I haven't broken the Bodhisattva vow because I did regret it. Be because people were not ready to accept the idea of exchanging their concern for fulfilling their own needs with a concern for fulfilling the needs of others and might disrespect this idea if it was taught to them, thus collecting serious negative karma. What I love about Lojong is all the teachings on love and all the teachings on emptiness just end up meeting in the same exact place. They're like, if you were a messiah of sorts and someone dropped you off I don't know, in the Levant two millennia ago, how would you sum all this up in two sentences or one sentence with two parts? Do unto others as they would have you, you would want them to do unto you. the golden rule, literally. The most refined, precious part of all Christianity is also the most refined, precious part of all Buddhism. Coincidence? No, it's just truth. Doesn't matter who you are, beard, no beard, white guy, brown guy. <laughs> Although I'm pretty sure he was brown, okay? Um, Does Christianity have any kind of um, wisdom component in there? Yeah. You should read, if you want to know about that, The Eastern Path to Christianity. I forget what Geshe calls it. Geshe wrote a whole book on it. Yeah, I did read that a few, a few, a few years ago. Um, maybe I can look at that again. Reread it. <laughs> Dude, if you read the, if after you take the ACI courses, you read the New Testament, you're like, karma, emptiness, emptiness, karma, 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 emptiness, emptiness, karma. But don't proselytize to your Christian friends unless they're ready. Okay, some might be ready. Okay, the five powers and then <clears throat> one more. Geshe Chikawa, also known as Geshe Chikapa, <laughs> says that, the brief essentials of the instruction are combined within five powers. Okay, so nga, nga, nga means what? Leah? It means I. N no, high tone, nga. I'll give you a clue. Oh, five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I tried to make it easy. There's like two words there. I was like, okay, she's got this. She's definitely got this. Yeah, it just means five. Tolp means powers or, I don't know, ability, basically. Anyway, <clears throat> it's basically the flow of your whole Dharma practice, but also the flow of any given day. So when you first wake up in the morning, you have to be like, I'm going to crush the root of all my problems, which is cherishing myself or the others slash thinking I have a self when I don't, right? This is called Dak Chen Zin. This is called Dak Zin, cherishing a self and believing there's a self that doesn't exist, okay? Either one will crush because they're the same thing, essentially, at that point. And then every time you basically move during the day, you have to be like, I'm crushing the enemy. I'm crushing the enemy. And then all day, based on that knowledge, do good stuff, even if it hurts. <laughs> a, a little bit if it hurts a lot don't do it okay remember vegetables if you can part with your carrots and there's a little twin just give the carrots okay if there if there's bliss that's even better you'll reach a point where you can do things you can't do now with blissful i think mothers do that when i talked to my mom today or you was it yesterday she had like a gallon of water and i was like Mommy, can I have some of your water? And she's like, and she jokingly, she's like, no, like, go away. And then she's like, ha ha ha. She's like, yes, you can have it. She's like, and then she's, then she's like, you can have as much of anything I have. And she meant it too. She means it. <laughs> I, 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 don't <laughs> I try not to say things like that because I wouldn't mean it <laughs> or not for long. I might mean it for like the moment, like right after teaching for like five minutes or something. I'm like, oh, bodhicitta. And then like six minutes later, I'm like getting in a fight with Rivas over something. <laughs> so we, that's what we do. That's what we mothers do. And we've all been mothers. Yeah, but it's been a while for me. <laughs> I have different parts now. <laughs> I have different concerns. <laughs> uh, you can imagine what those are. Okay, pure white seeds. It means doing good things all day. And then that's, that's the third power. The fourth power is destruction. Learn to bash the habit of cherishing yourself quickly on the head whenever it might arise. Bash is a good word if you can catch it. And as I, I repeat, Sun Jinpa, this is like a horrible, violent word in Tibetan. I believe it means to rape, okay? Um, or it can mean, it means to tear out, to like rip out or something. So like, again, these Kadampa Lamas are just like, no, 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 don't let it stay for a second. Just like, rah, like violently tear it out. Um, but in this way, it's the highest compassion. So you're not being violent. Don't actually be violent to yourself or anyone. Okay, and the fifth one, at the end of the day, Tartuk. If you don't know what Tartuk means, ask Alex Rivas, okay? He's a Tartuk master. He even pronounces it perfectly. He pronounces it in Mexican style. He's like, Tartuk. <laughs> Nah, Rivas is very good English. Um, and and decent Tibetan, okay? You need to study more. But really, at the end of the day, you dedicate, you think about all the good things you did and just be like, just bask in it. This is not the time of day to have low self-esteem. Just be like, and then I taught that class, even though it was annoying. Uh, not this class, another class I'm teaching. And then... Uh, <laughs> I taught Tibetan this morning too. I want to. I'm like, I taught them Tibetan. 
Oh my God. What else? I did something for my mom. What else did I do today? Oh yeah, I helped somebody with like, I gave, I helped people with medicine. I even dragged my butt to the gym when I was tired so that I'd be healthy for others. Actually, so I'd look good to get a girlfriend, but that's bad karma. That's that's a bad motivation. <laughs> but like that, really, at the end of the day, think of all the good things, okay? Wait, I have a, I have a comment on, um, D, on D. Because oh. I, re I remember from the last um, Mixed Nuts, I remember this um, phrase, um, Chem Say Chem. Oh, Chem Say Chem. <laughs> yeah, that's... I remember hearing it a lot, Chem Say Chem, Chem Say Chem, dancing on the head. Yeah, it's chum say chum means dancing on the head. That's so, soon jimpa doesn't look like the same thing. It doesn't look like it's a different translation. It looks like it's a whole nother phrase. Bashing the head and dancing on the head. That is that's a whole um that's a whole other phrase. Sun jimpa doesn't mean bash on the head literally. It means to tear out literally. And then chem say chem, which is in this course. Wait, is it this course? Yeah, it's the Wheel of Knives. The Wheel of Knives comes from that. That's the Wheel of Lives. Um, Seiji Araro Takahashi's book. Um, wheel of Knives, not the Wheel of Life, the wheel, wheel of Knives, right? Yeah, the Wheel of Knives. The crown of knives? What does Geshe call it? I think he calls it the crown of knives. It, yeah, I think he calls the crown of knives. Excuse me. Um, um, do you guys want to see what she's talking about? It, it, it means the same thing, though, right? Like people are talking. Like the, the writers are talking about like fighting the mental afflictions. Right? Yeah, it yeah, it does mean very similar things, actually. It does. It does. It it means um yeah, not particularly not even mental afflictions, but in particular your self, self cherishing. Your your self cherishing, precisely. Very good. I want to pull this thing up, but like I'm having a serious like What? Why? Hold on. Oh, I'll just do this. Okay, now I got it. Uh... Yeah, crown of knives. Okay, here we go. Don't tell Sagey, okay? <laughs> no, I'm allowed. I asked permission. I asked permission to teach all these books. You guys want me to teach them? <laughs> yeah, please teach. I'm thinking about it. All of them. I mean, what are you going to do on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday nights now? You need something to do. Oh, my God. I finished my <laughs> trivia game. No way. <laughs> yeah, I got the basics. Maybe we can play for a minute or two. <laughs> now that we're almost done all 18 courses. Here's the Chim Say Chim. Mm. We shouldn't go that way. Mm. Who is this from? Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. Kelly, Kelly, we just read that, right? We kept coming back to the line. Smashed now the skull of my misperceptions. Oh, what is? Because what? When Hector taught it, or Hector spoke it at the original ACI courses? No. No, um, at the Three Jewels last week, Rachel teaching um, on Thursday. We we just um, we just recited the Crown of Knives. 
Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, Hector read that in the original courses. Oh, oh that's that, right. no, 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 that was someone else. No, no, Hector read uh, Master Shanti Deva. Yeah, yeah, someone else read read all this. Doctor, what's his name? I forget. That's the Chem Say Chem. It's different. Okay, see it. I showed you. I did my job. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping all this adds up. This karma adds up to me being able to translate all this stuff. Okay, we're gonna finish this. Then we're gonna do a little trivia. Yay! What were the words that Geshe Chikawa blurted out as he lay near death? What What did he say? Sum it up for me, Kelly McGee. He um, he was he was trying to take on everybody's suffering and to take it with him and like destroy it for everybody and to, yeah. go, to, hell, to go to hell on behalf of everybody else. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, he blurted out something to the effect of like, no matter how hard he tried, all that was in front of him was bliss. Yeah, angels. Yeah, paradise. <laughs> um, he said, okay, so Geshe says, obviously carrying out his own advice and performing the practice of transferring his consciousness in the tradition of the greater way, he yelled out, I was praying that I could pass on to the lowest hell for the sake of help of every little being. It's not working. I can't go. All I can see before me now is the paradise of his life. <laughs> Yeah, these are uh, these are Kadampa Lama problems. Uh, enlightenment, no. Now that is some bojong. Um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I don't know what I'm gonna do Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. I'm thinking to teach all the ACI courses from the beginning. Just do this whole thing again and teach Tibetan and teach all those books. <laughs> because I won't study all otherwise, I really won't. I mean, it's one of those things I'm too smart for my own good I learn too quick and then I never want to review because I'm like, eh, I know this enough. But if I have to know it better for like Kelly McGee's sake or something, then I'll study, so. Yes, please. And please then I can, be teaching. I can trick Kelly McGee into becoming a translator. Um, okay, any questions before we start? Oh, just one quick question. Um, the five, the five steps of Poa. The last question, the previous question. Uh huh. Where the the reference in the last one to the two forms of the wish for enlightenment. That's just referring to like the the wish for bodhicitta and then the true bodhicitta. Um. Is the two forms, or is it something else? It's probably the wish. Where does it say that? The answer to the fifth, the fifth poa, the um. The fifth power. Yeah, rejoicing at night. It says and dedicate it to the. Yeah, it's probably, it's probably the wish in the form of a prayer and the wish in the form of action. Yeah. Although there's another way to divide the two, the wish into two parts, which is the wish in its deceptive form and then the wish in its ultimate form, which is the direct perception of emptiness. Okay. So it could be either. The wish in its deceptive form is just like regular, like bodhicitta when you, normal bodhicitta, you know, thinking of other beings as others, which they're not, right? In the sense of self existently. Okay, thanks. Question? Okay, let's play.
Good, good job on the naming of this game. Yeah, I called it Enlightened, Pur Enlightened Pursuit <laughs> instead of Trill Pursuit. Get it? Get it? <laughs> okay, these are the colors. We're not going to get the board. I don't have the board out yet. But I, I used Kelly McGee's suggestion and my thought from like seven years ago when I thought of this game first. Okay, here we go. We'll just do a couple random ones, all right? Alex Rivas can answer too. Okay, Rivas. Here we go. Ooh. Whoa. List the seven qualities that make a person who performs given the exceptional type of giver. What is the name of the seven together? <laughs> I don't remember that one. These are really hard. <laughs> I haven't done class 10. This is, this is course five, class 10. Oh, 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 I've done this one. The seven qualities that make a person who performs. Bodhi, bodhicitta. That's a good guess, I don't know. What else? Maybe one, if I, I'll, I'll reveal one. Let me see if that helps. Faith. That doesn't help. <laughs> okay, let's see. I don't know them. Faith. With wisdom. Sure, wisdom. That's perfect. Generosity. That would help morality. Learning. A sense of shame. And I guess a sense of consideration would be next. Yeah. yeah. Consideration. And then one more. Wisdom. Yay. Good job, Leah. One point for Leo. Okay, here we go. Okay, we'll do this one. Give the names of the root text and commentary we are using to study of the perfections of patience, effort, and meditation. Guide to the Bodhisattva's way of life. Um. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, you're totally right. I forgot to, but um, what's the commentary? That's the root text. What's the commentary? Wait, who wrote the Bodhisattva's Way of Life? Master Shanti Deva. Yeah, what are his years approximately? Um, I don't remember. Seven. So, oh, I yeah. should guess. Were you gonna say that, Leah? Yeah. Yeah, it's not Jeopardy. You don't lose points for guessing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, okay, but who wrote the commentary? Jason Kappa. No, his top student. Oh. Uh, Gossip J. Yeah. yeah, what are his years? Um, just after Jason Kappa. So yeah, that's. I'll tell you a trick to remember. Maybe you forgot the trick. Oh. The numbers. Oh, Rivas got it. Rivas, oh my. I'm in love. Don't tell your wife, okay? Wait, was Rivas right though? Those numbers didn't look right. <laughs> Those numbers are exactly right. <clears throat> okay, whoops. Rivas, if you give me K Drip J's dates, I'll give you $20. <laughs> 1385 to 1438. <clears throat> I I still owe you money, Rebus, right? Yeah, I have it. I have a list. I'm gonna do it. I'll just pay everyone off. I gotta pay my taxes and my students. Equally painful. Okay, here we go. What is that the end? That course 18? No, it's okay. What? No. Oh yeah, that is course 18. Go this way. Do, 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 do. Oh, what's that long one? Oh no, I forgot to break that one. Oh no, that's the results. I thought I finished that. Damn it. Um, that one's gonna be too long. 
Wait. I gotta work on that. I missed it. I'll mark it for later. Okay. One more. Okay, this one you can do. Okay, Kelly McGee, this is you. Okay, you ready? Well, Leah do one, does, does one half, Kelly McGee does the other. Then we're gonna finish class, all right? Okay. The root text says, may, hold on. Well, wait, can we then do that protector controversy question? Because we keep, that keeps coming up. Where? In, um, amongst my, my sangha. <laughs> Things are empty. Stop being rude to people. That's easy. Okay. The root text says <laughs> that's always the, it's always seeds. Okay. It's just like my student and her sister. Oh, the protector controversy is empty too. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> it is. People don't know what it's referring to. Uh, that's old news. You don't want to hear about that. Okay. Um, there's always some drama. It's called some sorrow. The root text says, may none of these be made impure by eight ideas of things. The phrase eight ideas of things can refer to two different sets of eight. List the two sets separately below. Okay, Leah, give me the first eight. So th these aren't the eight worldly thoughts, are they? They are. Oh, I love the eight worldly thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> you love them or you love knowing that they're bad? <laughs> They just, they, they, they make me laugh. They flip things around. They're, um, I, I also like telling them to non-Buddhists just to sort of um, really, um, to have people's jaw drop. Um, so yeah, don't, don't feel good when, um, when you get something you want. And, um, and then when other people don't get something, that, and wait a minute, now I'm getting them mixed up. And then don't it's all about you. So it's not other people. It's not other people. Okay. So don't feel good when you get what you want. And um, when you, and don't not feel good when you don't get what you want. Six more. Okay. Um, don't feel good when people speak highly of you and don't not feel good when people don't speak well of you. Four more. Don't feel good when um, you're well known. Don't feel lousy when you're not well known. Two more. And I think it was the first one, which is like, don't feel good. Like when you feel good. <laughs> yeah. And don't feel lousy when you don't feel good. But I didn't get the word quite right, but it's like even more sort of primal. Yeah. If you get, if you feel pleasurable, don't get all happy about it. If you feel painful don't get all sad about it yeah and then i have to rush back when talking to you know people who are non-buddhists and say it, it doesn't mean like don't feel good it means don't think that it doesn't don't don't think that um the feeling pleasure is coming from its own side just you know know that we're we're putting it on the the, the object i ultimately i think it will mean that but i don't the teaching isn't that actually like if you listen to the teaching, because Geshe Michael teaches this in course one, it's like it's like class three or something. Um, and he doesn't say that necessarily. I mean, eventually, yeah, it all comes down to that. But it's really just, it's, it's even more rudimentary than that. I mean, any wizened adult's gonna know, just like, yeah, okay, you got some money. Don't get all crazy about it. Like, Something bad's gonna happen in the next ten minutes, <laughs> and when that bad thing happens, don't get all bummed about it. Just like something good's gonna happen in the next twenty. Like whatever, dude. Like chill out. It's life. You get it? It's 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 much more rudimentary than even understanding emptiness. But eventually, of course, it has to do with emptiness. Um. Okay. What are the next eight, Kelly McGee? I'll give you a hint. Nagar Arya Nagarjuna. Oh yeah. Um this is the, the stopping and things. Uh, how do you call the title the title of it? The eight um it's like the appearance that things stop, the appearance that things start. Yeah. Uh, 
appearance that things are coming, the appearance that things are going. Um, I don't remember the others. Is it? It's not, it doesn't get into liking and disliking them. It's more like- Oh, it's all phenomenon. So, um, no, uh, for some reason two just bounced out of my head, which is funny, but nothing starts, nothing stops, nothing goes, nothing comes, nothing is one, nothing is many, and it's not two just bounced out of my head. I had them like two seconds ago. Um, oh, I didn't break this one up either. <laughs> Um, that's right. Excuse me. I thought I was done. I probably, I apparently missed stuff. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Nothing starts, nothing stops. Oh, oh yeah, talk and Che. Oh yeah, okay, the extremes. Um, nothing is unchangeable. Nothing exists as, nothing exists in the way as being something that could never change. And nothing exists in the way that is something that could never exist at all or ever existed at all and nothing goes and nothing comes. And they're called the eight extremes. These two are the most classic extremes nowadays. I need to work on my document more. I thought I finished everything, but I didn't. Okay. Anyway, that's it. Yay. That was fun. Yeah, imagine a board. It'd be fun. It would be more fun with teams, I think. Because, like, if there's teams, some people know things, other people, you know, you forget and you can think about it. And, you know, we'll have kombucha. And <laughs> I'm just thinking what the graphics could look like. I'm thinking about, like, a like a Bucky kind of, like, you know, like a web before the internet exists or something. Or, I don't know, maybe you've thought of graphics. You're into comics. Maybe it has something to do with comics. No, I'm just going to steal the Trio Pursuit board for now. I'm not making anything. <laughs> we'll just use the dice and everything. It's, I don't, that makes it easy. Yeah, someone else can do all that other stuff. Someone who's less lazy than me. Okay. Kelly McGee, is there any questions? Because if not... All right. Go ahead, Kelly McGee. Sashi, Puki, Jukshin, Netok, Cham, Rira, Lingshi, Nyande, Genpa, Di, Sange, Shingdu, Mikte, Uwar, Gi, Jokun, Namdak, Shingla, Chupa, Sho, Idam Guru, Ratna, Mandala, Kam, Niriatayami. Kewa di keu kun, Sunam yeshe tok tok shing, Sunam yeshe le jung wei, Tampa kuni topa shok. Yay! Lojong is the best ever. Um, study Lojong. You, I feel like Rebus is really good at low drum. He'll never admit it, but he is. <clears throat> I've never really seen Rebus mad. I'm sure he gets mad at someone. I mean, maybe not. I don't know. I've never seen him mad. He's always just about that. You see that smile on his face? He's always giving something away to somebody. And then like getting some something back ridiculous. Aren't you, Rivas? Suspicious. It's very suspicious. 
Okay. That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. So hasta miércoles. See you Wednesday. Thank you. Gracias, Alejandra, para grabar. Thanks for grabbing. <laughs> That's recording. And gracias, Alejandra Rivas, para tra traducir. <laughs> Although I don't know what he's actually saying, so it could be really bad. <laughs> Maybe he's horrible. <laughs> No, his English and Spanish are very good. Thank you. Thank you, Rivas. Okay. Bye, everybody. So, Bye, Rivas. Bye, Alejandra. So please come Wednesday. You're my only students left. <laughs> <laughs> Let's finish the course. Four yeah. more, only four more classes. Okay. Bye, everyone.